all very much for coming. This is our first totally figurative show. Um, and a lot of it is in Cedric and Jonette Angley's honor. They started this in this area, um, have been training artists for a long, long time. Um, I want to introduce you. This is Abigail McBride, John Ebersberger, and Cedric Egley. And Abigail studied with both John and Cedric, and John studied with Cedric. And I had posed a question a couple of weeks ago that I wanted them to talk to you all about what does it take to make a great figurative work of art? I have to say, I just learned so much from both of these um, guys. It's, it would be really hard to distill it down, but the, I, the essential principles of what things are and paint those things instead of only the decorative details, but the essential essence of it um, and to be inspired by the essence of it. Yeah. I'm inspired just by what I see, you know, and certain things strike you and inspire you and the, um, sometimes it's just a light effect that's inspiring and sometimes it's the, the pattern of the shapes, you know, is interesting to you or uh, sometimes it's the subject. Like right now for me, the fact that it's a child alone is inspiring to me, but then I end up bringing in all those other inspiring elements like, oh, the color, look what the color's doing, what the light is doing, and look at the pattern of the shapes, and, but the, the first spark, you know, can be any of those things. To me, it's just inspiring the way the light is um, enveloping the figure. And I would go out, I set this up um, in my yard, and I would paint it at the same time of day when the light condition was the same. Okay, So I was exploring how color, uh, well, let's just say color is the vocabulary that an artist uses to describe light and form in light. So I tried to register the color changes that were occurring on that figure as, it, as the form turns in space. I also tried to capture somewhat the effect of the light bouncing off of the uh, subject matter. You might have observed, you know, if you, see, if you talk to somebody outside that has a bright white shirt on, you know how the light's kind of flashing off of them. So I tried to study the color nuance of that as well. So it was just, just a really beautiful motif to me to study. And it's kind of cool that you can set up something like that right in your yard. You don't have to, um, you know, travel to exotic lands, you know, that there's just beautiful things to observe uh, all, all around you. Um, That's when I was painted that when I was about 27 or 28. And uh, my wife is, uh, that's my wife, Jonette, and she was uh, very beautiful to me. The uh, thing about her, she's very dramatic and, and outgoing and um, you know, a very lively person. So I was trying to get that quality in the picture. That's why I put the arms out more like, uh, Ingrid, what did you say? Like she's taken off. <laughs> she's taken off. <laughs> everybody knows that she's always taken she's off. Got, <laughs> she's she's got get, places to go. She's got places to go. <laughs> you know, I was instinctively, instinctively trying to get that quality. So, of course, I was never satisfied with the picture, that's probably why I didn't finish it. But now I look back on it, um, I did a lot of paintings of her. I can't see it too well from here, but there's that, a glare on but that is, because um, there's a glare on it shining, but that's, uh, I think, pretty successful. That is, so many people come in and, and figurative work um, is challenging for collectors to look at and make a decision to buy. And many of them will say, but it's, it's a person I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not comfortable buying and having somebody else in my house that's not my family. What would you say to that person? Well, let me, for, for at one time I, I did a painting of a Brandeis University president and, and everybody came in and said, uh, oh, that's really beautiful portrait, that's really great, we love that of him, that's terrific. And then somebody came in and said, oh, it's really a beautiful painting, but it's a portrait. It's too bad it'll never have any value. So I said, well, it just happened that week that the sergeant painting had come out and first portrait and it sold for, that was like 15 years ago, and it sold for a million and a half dollars. 
When I, when I was in art school, um, I worked at a place called United Artists Materials, and it was right across from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Not Metro, Metropolitan, but the Modern Museum of Art. So all these guy, people would come in and brag about all these abstract paintings they were buying, and they paid a couple thousand, you know, 10,000 for them or this, and they were so great. And I said, what are you doing that for? Here you can buy a sergeant for $2,000. You can buy a Bouguereau for $1,500. You can buy this. All these great paintings are right at the low. Why didn't you buy those? And of course, I was just a 20-year-old art student, but you can see the sergeants are not are not $1.5 million anymore. They're like $20 million. So when it comes to a portrait, if the portrait really is based on really art qualities, you know, uh, like like patterns, light and shade, and colors, and, and things that make up life, it'll be a valuable painting. But if it's just a photocopy job, which there are a lot of them out there are, uh, they're not they're going to be worth anything. So. I